Performance mode has expanded controller support in FL11 and here we'll show you how to get a track ready for performance. We've included a project file in the tutorial files folder so you can follow along. Open the file name perfmodetute.zip, FL can open zip loop files as projects, and take a look at the playlist view to see how the track is normally arranged. We next click the tools menu and in the macros submenu select prepare for performance mode under the misc heading. A prompt tells you the project will be tweaked for live performance, so click OK. You'll see the look of the track change, as immediately a blank area will appear before the denoted start point. This is where we'll arrange our playable clips. We need the clips in a triggerable layout, so we start in our project by pasting pattern 2, the drum pattern, in track 1 under pad number 1 at the top. If you're using a compatible pad controller, we're using a launch pad S, the placement of clips corresponds to the pads on your controller. We put our chords, pattern 1, first in the track 2 row, and our bass line, pattern 14, in track 3. We continue laying out our patterns, only placing one instance of each pattern in a logical order, so we have the lead, pattern 5, next on track 4. However, we have different melodies we want to trigger with our lead sound, and they are of different lengths. We put patterns 6 to 11 end to end along track 5 and can see these extend beyond the length of a single numbered pad marker. Although our clips above track 5 also extend beyond the length of one pad, this isn't a problem as they are the only clips in this row. For track 5 this is a problem as we need the patterns to be next to each other on our controller's pad row. If your controller is on and has lit feedback of where triggerable clips are, take a look at it now. There are unlit gaps between our triggerable clips. This wasted space isn't ideal for performing with. In our project, we can address this by right-clicking the Pad 2 marker at the top and selecting Delete. We do this for pads 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15 and 16. If your controller is lit, look again and it will now display the triggerable clips as sequential pads. Just a note, we're referring to the numbers the pad markers to be deleted have as their default numbering, as markers are renumbered as they're deleted. We finish placing our patterns by placing Auto Clip, an automation clip that creates a pumping sidechain on our bass and chords, on track 8. We place pattern 12 on track 6 and our retime tambourine loop, which we recorded in our new tone tutorial, in track 7 to finish our layout. It's unclear which tracks represent which instruments, so we name and colour tracks 1 to 7 by right clicking the track name and selecting rename slash colour. We name them appropriately and just pick some distinct colours to differentiate. For track 5 we also right click and under performance settings pick one shot so these parts play once rather than loop when they're triggered. We now delete everything past the start marker except auto clip 3 envelope, a filter sweep for our chords. We leave it here because we only want this to play at the start without us having to trigger it. Now we play our song, and either trigger the clips we want with our pads, or click the clips directly with the mouse. Follow this same process with your own tracks to transform them into performance ready tunes. 